the region between the lines x equals 0, which is the green line, the graph of y equals x cubed, which is the red line, and y equals 27, which is this blue line. And we're asked to use the method of cylindrical shells. When you're using the cylindrical shell method, you want to have your typical thin shell parallel to the axis of revolution. And we were told the x-axis is the axis of revolution. So the cylindrical shell method says we're going to take 2 pi times we're going to be integrating along the y-axis because that's where our shells are appearing perpendicular to the y-axis at time from 0 to 27 then we're going all the way from 0 up to y equals 27 and then we need the height of each of these typical shells and this is a horizontal distance, an x distance. So we have to solve this original function, y equals x cubed, and get the value of x in terms of y. And that's what these points down here are showing you. So in other words, when y is the cube root of 5, which is right here, then this x distance is, uh, I'm sorry, when y is 5, then the x value is this distance right here, which is the height of the shell, the cube root of 5. And so it goes as we examine these typical shells. So the height of a typical shell is y to the 1 -third power. And a typical radius is the distance from the axis of revolution to the center of a shell. Well, that's just a y distance, the height to this, this center of this shell is y and so it goes for all these shells so we need a y here and we're integrating with respect to y dy so what the integral you have to evaluate is from 0 to 27 of y to the one fourth uh y to the four thirds And, of course, you get an antiderivative for four, y to the four-thirds. Raise the exponent by one. Multiply by the reciprocal of the new exponent. Uh, you'll probably get an answer in terms of pi instead of this approximation here. So don't, take, don't use an uh, approximation for pi, but rather leave pi in your answer. Okay, there you go. Hopefully that clears up how to set up the definite integral that will give you the value for the volume of revolution in this problem. There you go.